The impetus for doing this video uh, is a couple of things. First, I get a lot of questions on the channel whenever I post a video on a pencil and paper dungeon crawl. I get a lot of questions about the other ones that's not that video. So for example, on my Four Against Darkness video, I got questions about D100 and certainly on the D100 videos I've done, I've got a lot of questions about Four Against Darkness down to people asking, well, why don't you like Four Against Darkness? Maybe because I do a lot of videos on D100, I don't know. So I've decided to put together my thoughts about five different pencil and paper dungeon crawl systems that I know that I have played. I like all of them. And it's not a ranking, it's not a comparison per se. It's a discussion to tell you and perhaps recommend some of the strengths of the systems as I see them and maybe point out some of my wish list for each of the systems as I see it. At the end of the video, I'm also going to talk about two others that I own have, that I have not yet played, and I may be playing those and bringing those to the channel, I don't know, and would also ask in the comments if you know of pencil and paper dungeon crawl systems that I have not mentioned here, and I'm sure there are a zillion of them. So please put them in the comments. There's probably some others that I know of that I'm forgetting, but the, the five here, I've done videos on them and the links to the videos are gonna be below and perhaps interspersed in this video. And then the uh, discussion is going to be about them in the order in which I think I have played them, the order in which I've encountered them. It's not a ranking. As I said, this is not like a top five and I didn't, didn't name the video that for clickbait because that's not what it is. You can assume that these are my top five because I play them I play them regularly and I like them all. But I will be talking about them mostly in the order in which I personally have played them and pointing out about each system what I think some of the particular strengths are and possibly some of the weaknesses. So if there are any in here that you haven't played or are thinking about, you can have at least my assessment of some things about them. And we're going to start off with the first one that I played. And I should say also, perhaps I did not, um, perhaps I'm going to be incorrect in, in my ordering. It's my memory basically of when I played them and how I encountered them. I know that Pocket Dungeon was the first one. I'm pretty sure about that. I don't know that it's the first video I made on on these types of systems. I don't can't say that. But so Pocket Dungeon is free on Board Game Geek, and I do not believe it's ever been in a paid version. They do have a second edition or an upgraded 2.0 edition that I have printed out. This was not the original edition that I played. The original concept behind it, and I don't think I have that print out anymore, was that it was meant to be like a stealth dungeon crawler, meaning you could play it like at work when nobody would know that you're playing it. And a lot of the rules, like there were ways of using the paper instead of using a D6 or any dice whatsoever. And some of the pocket mods that were designed for it, like said, you know, to-do list or something on the top. So that was, um, that was like part of it. And as such, I, I mean, I don't think that really, I, I don't know how many people were actually trying to play this at work. I certainly wasn't. But as such, you can play it on one single sheet of paper. This being your stats of your, you're playing a single character, keeping track of the monsters killed, obviously graphing the dungeon out here and um, the little random tables you need for rolling on it. What I've always really liked about this, and I, it is, and here, this is the original, what the original printout looked like in terms of the size of it. The, if you do print this out on Board Game Geek, I would do point 2.0, but there's somebody has taken this, which is like almost too big and many, many pages and shrunk it down into fewer pages. I would, I would go with that. Um, but this, my, my sense is that this is slightly better organized than the first one was. What I've always liked about this is that the rules are simple and here's the first one. The, the one sheet really lends itself to a lot of 
story development. So if you watch my original video on this, you'll know I was playing this with one of my kids and we gave the our quest. We made up our own little monsters here. We have these like hairy carrot trolls and we have a bookworm. This was taking place in, in a library. We were trying to get to the library of everything. This looks to be page two of it. The I've always felt it's very open to making your own little monsters because the stats are so simple. And in this video, I'm not going to go through anything concerning the rules for these games because that's not really the purpose of this video. But I would say that if you're new to pen and paper dungeon crawls, this might be a good one to start with simply because it is all in one place. And that's kind of one of the beefs I have about I probably pretty much all the other ones I'm going to talk about, which is that the rules and mechanics are spread out in various different booklets. And so in order to really play the game, if you want to get all the rules, you have to either buy or download a whole bunch of different things. And most of them, or maybe all of them, none of them compile it. Whereas here, for better or worse, there aren't a lot of new rules. There are some adventures that I think the original game designer created that are also one-page adventures that are posted on the game page on Board Game Geek. I don't know how much of a fan base there is. I looked a little while ago to see if somebody had made some new adventures for it, but I don't recall seeing any. So I'm not sure what that says about its popularity, but the, the simplicity of it, you know, rolling up a basic room with traps and monsters and things like that and moving through and getting, being able to roll on a small table and get your treasure and your magic item. Um, we died here by a green slime, apparently, is um, it, it, it's the right level, I think, of complexity. And you can see here some of the special you have, you know, again, nothing groundbreaking, but it is a lucky coin and you get some special armor or teleportation thing. It's compact and you can create a single character and play through a dungeon pretty easily. And you can just take a look here. There's a warrior. Again, what you would expect. There's a wizard. There's a warrior. You get special abilities for those things. There's a thief, and there's a ranger, and a cleric, and a barbarian, and a monk. That's about it. But again, it is, it's the full package really in one file. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what I can say about it. And to, to its, to its benefit, it is that. One thing I always found curious is in the monster manual, the way that they want you to play it is to, you choose a monster package and it's like all the monsters in the first say nine rooms or something are like gonna be the same. And then they're gonna go, they're all gonna be cobalt and then they're all gonna be goblins. I never liked that. I think that's what sort of started me on house ruling it and making up my own. If I was doing this and I didn't wanna actually make my own monsters, I would just kind of go through and pick all the level one. So you'd have a mix of say cobalt, skeletons, cultists, just, to have a little bit of flavor. Now, I will say here, for the most part, although you have some special abilities, a lot of these monsters, and this is a this is a ding I have on some of the other systems that I'm going to talk about, they don't really have, they're just sort of generic different stats. So they may attack with greater or lesser frequency. They're going to do different damage. They may have a different movement, but there are not special abilities associated with them. And, and that, I think, is a missed opportunity. We have a little bit here. So, for example, this Drow Priest on a monster attack roll, they're going to heal themselves. But for many of these, there isn't anything. And I think that was a missed opportunity, as I said here. But overall, this is one I take out. I really I enjoy this one a lot. And I think if you are a gamer who wants to involve your kids in building up a repertoire of or a thought process of house ruling games and tinkering with them, this is a great one to start with. And you could also probably run it as a little GM for a kid. But it's not, it's not just a kid's game or even primarily a kid's game. Here is an example. This is something that um, we worked up with a special 
adventure, I guess, that we were doing, slippery socks you're wearing, you fall and trip and lose a health point. Those are some curses. Um, as you can see, the, the uh, kid involvement here, the TV is on and you get drawn into the show, um, creating some terrain effects. These were uh, magical clothing, bubble headband, a shooting skirt. So this is an example of, I had forgotten that we, we did all of this with one of my kids and obviously spent a lot of time putting this together, but the game invites that the game invites that kind of thing. So Pocket Dungeon has been definitely an, an enjoyable game for me. And even just seeing it now, I think um, it makes me want to play it again. One thing that one could also do, again, if you're looking for almost like an exercise in working with rule books and in paring down complicated things to more their essence, is you could take something like the fifth edition monster manual and look up some monsters that you wanted to encounter, really strip them down to their elements, put them into the system, give them one or two special abilities and throw them into this pocket dungeon here. And um, I think that would be pretty fun. Next up, we've got D100 Dungeon. This game is probably the game on the channel that has the most videos uh, from me on it and it's not necessarily because it's my favorite game in the whole world it's because although I do like it quite a bit there's just there's so much material and it all comes out separately and I've done videos I think on most of the releases I originally played this game as a free file which may still be up on BGG that's how I first came encounter came across it and then I began to play the physical parts of the game. And yes, I have highlighted it. The, uh, what can I say about it? You play a single character. The strengths of this system, first of all, I love anything D100. I just, I love the D100 tables. And as such, there is the content here is just amazing. And just in this one book, these are all, you've got D100 quests. Now it's not quite 100 quests, but still. And you have the, you have the find tables and the geographic things that you can come across in your dungeon. You also have, and this I think really differentiates it from maybe all the other ones we're talking about here is there's a sense of a world. There's a sense outside the dungeon. So even in, this is the very first, only the very first release of the book, right from the outset, there was a possibility of spending some of your money, investing it in these abstracted things like trade or finance or wars, and that this carried forward your character. And I think that's amazing. And from, from the beginning, this did, as I said, differentiate the game. And the identification with a single character is helped along by that. The other thing that is great about it uh, as the system has developed is that the rules have increased and with some depth so and, and but the, the, again the downside is they're all <laughs> they're all in separate books which does irritate me because it's not possible to play the game and get all these rules like if you want to use a very basic rule of like bashing in the doors you've you've got to have it in this separate book and there is a great um, witchery uh, skill, I guess it would be called, where you can brew your own potions and make your own things, but this rule is in a separate book. There's a rule that came in about death kill. I love this one, where if your last blow to a monster is like, I think it's 10 or more points of excess damage, you get to roll on these tables or actually look it up to see where if you're damaging its back with plus 15, then you get this, the attack tears open the back, severing its spine and it slumps forward, twitching in pain. This is great. The additional content is for, that, that Martin Knight keeps providing for this isn't just like something else. It really does add a level of depth to it. And there's side quests that you can do. There's also campaigns, there are, here, let's see, actually here, the Dragon Armor is an adventure book one. This is an entire, like essentially like a choose your own adventure story, like a pretty meaty story that you can you read through this story and then you can play through this whole 
this whole adventure and then there's also some side quests here but then again like within this then he's got at the front of it this the rule for doors so there, there, there's that's that's always been um, a little bit of a problem for me there's also a physical d100 dungeon mapping game if you've seen my any of my videos you've seen that i don't have it here at my desk but if you want to play that out with actual physical tiles and tokens that work in conjunction with some of the books, you can do that too as a almost like a board game thing. There is a file that you can print, and I have it here. It does not exist as a PDF, but it is a file of basically all of, of sort of all of the different D100 tables that were from all of the various books. So you don't have to go to the other books, but it's not the rules, it's just the tables. So the various finding tables, for example, or the additional geographic tiles and all the different items. And then that death kill thing that I was saying, pointing out earlier, along with more details about the investments and things. So there's, you, you can get the tables together at this point, in one place, but not the rules. At some point, he introduced the capacity to do a quick adventurer to bring in a, an adventurer at level five. One of the, the one of the knocks against the game, and I sort of did feel this myself too, is that you are really scratching and clawing your way up to increase your stats. Your stats are based on D100 to even get like another point or two on a stat, you have to do a lot of adventuring. And while that might make sense thematically, play-wise, it didn't always work out. So one of the books introduced rules for a quick start adventurer where you could go through and basically create, um, it's essentially an adventurer who's already done five, I think it's five different quests. So you have built up not only some skills, but you have some items and things that you can then trade or sell and start to invest your money in, uh, well, here's an example of quick equipment, start to invest your money either in things like speculations, basically, or in purchasing other items or purchasing some advanced skills. Like, for example, this is martial artistry, but it costs like 4,000 gold to train. Kind of makes sense concepti conceptually because... That is an advanced idea, but it, it, you do have to, sometimes it just feels like a lot of work to get to something that would, that seems kind of cool to do. It costs 4,000 gold to, to do that. That's a lot in this game. So that's, that's something, I mean, obviously you could house rule that coming to you soon on the Geek Gamers channel is going to be a video on the latest release in D100 Dungeon, which is a world building system, which allows you to do even more with your character out of the dungeons um, and in the world. And I'm really looking forward to that because I think the, the, the gameplay here, sometimes the combat can feel a little bit lengthy and repetitive. I mean, again, this is sort of true of many, many characters. Here is a, this is my, uh, Thor Thronesucker III, he is the descendant of my very first D100 dungeon character, who was Thor Thronesucker, and I have Thor's original sheet somewhere in the mapping game. I don't have access to it right here, but I was creating this quick start character. He's a mountain dwarf. He has a familiar who's a tamed giant moth, and I was creating this guy for the video that I'm going to show you on the world building book when I get the physical copy of the book here. Another example of a great addition to the rules that came in later is this combat experience sheet so that you can, as you encounter the same enemy in a repeated manner, you gain experience with that particular monster. And then at a certain point, you get a bonus for it. And so again, it's an example of, it's another rule, but it makes great thematic sense. And it does add something very positive to the experience because at least you're like thinking like, oh, it's another giant spider. Well, you feel like, well, actually that's great because I'm going to be gaining some experience on that. The other example of the way in which you can 
see the kind of quote unquote reality of the system is that when you find things, they are damaged. So you're in a role for what type of damage it has. And there's also a fixed cost that is associated with fixing that damage. So if you try to, for example, sell something that's damaged, you're not going to get the full value for it. And if you want to bring it back up to its full health, you need to pay money to do that when you're in the town. You can see here in on this particular character sheet, there's a, there's a number of different types of character sheets just how many quests there are in this game available to you. There's quests, there's campaign quests, there's these side quests, and then there's extra quests. So that just the, the amount of content here is e e extraordinary. And just within each book, uh, you know, again, setting yourself up for a D100 system. Oh, here's a, an example of how you create some quick adventures. Setting yourself up, it's like you have to, you have to make a D100 table for everything. And even if you group some numbers together, you're looking at like 50 entries or something per table. That's just, it's an amazing amount of work. The quick adventures give you a, sen a look into some different types of heroes. We have hunters, sorcerers, scoundrels, assassins, rogues. And I recommend this game, especially if you're really committed to developing one character. And if you want to experience world building with that character to let them have a home base to invest their money to speculate in some type of trade market or stock market this game will offer you that and it is uh, i think really unique in that in that way i don't know of another game that does that at least in combination with essentially being a dungeon crawl which is what this is so yes d100 dungeon has a big place on the pencil and paper dungeon crawls on the channel because I there's so much content in it and when the content comes out I like to show it to you so it's resulted in a lot of different videos and one more to come. If you're looking for something that is sort of quick and easy and very rewarding right away I would not recommend D100 Dungeon because even if you can this is the whole game you can play just the game out of this but I think Going through the basic quests, I'm not sure it is as ultimately satisfying to do that as it is when you have access to all the different rules and all the different content. So I'm, I'm hopeful, and I say this in most of the videos that I do, that eventually um, the designer will see the wisdom of putting all the rules together in one rules tome, because I just think that would add so much for players to access the full richness of the game as it has been developed over the years because each release really does increase the depth and complexity of the game. Next up we've got the game that probably started my idea for this video which is Four Against Darkness and the reason why it started my idea for the video is that as I said at the outset I, I whenever I would do a video on D100 Dungeon I would inevitably get questions about this game. Why don't you like this game? Why have you never done a video on it, etc. And um, again, say it I, out again, I do like this game. I like this game a lot, actually. I've played this game a lot. I have a bunch of content for it, which I'll show you. Here's an example of some of my characters, some level two, level one, rogue warriors. I just like making characters in this game, too. The druid, the green troll, the, the book that lets you play the green troll, I love that. I'll show you what I've got here for this. The I've got the, so this is the advanced ones. And I, honestly, I don't think I've actually even played this, uh, gotten to level five, but um, I, I have this. The Wayfarers and Adventurers, I think, is a fantastic supplement because I love these characters. I love playing a gnome. This is where that troll comes in. I think you can play the druid here and you can play a troll, the green troll. Basically, you got to roll a d20 every time he does something. And most of what he does is like not good. So it's great. It's like it's just it. it's very it's very um, it, it enlivens the the experience quite a bit. And then I have this. Crucible of Classic Critters. Also, these are some woodland adventures. 
I love this system. I really do. I think it combines a, it, this, the mechanics are simple and you're sort of rolling, you know, you're adding a level with a, 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 an attack value, a basic value, but there's, there's so many little simple things. So that's the thing. So here's my a level one wood elf. We're going to add our level to our attack and our defense if we're in the forest jungle and always with a bow. Otherwise, we're going to add half of it. We get an addition, a benefit to wilderness traps, some stealth, very thematic. So there's simple mechanics, but a lot going on. The downside to it, of course, is if you don't feel like playing four characters, managing four characters yourself. I mean, I guess unless you're like playing the game with somebody, I've never done that, but I suppose you could each manage too, but it's, you know, you need four characters. That's what the game is. This is just a, some kind of cheat sheet. So that's, that's one downside to it. The other downside to it is this is a, the P, the original PDF I got. These basic rules are just a mess. They're all over the place. And I thought in a video that I was watching, someone said there's going to be a second edition or something, but I haven't seen any Think further on that. So if anyone knows about that, please let me know because that is something I would certainly appreciate. Just more organized rules here. I mean, they're so badly done that even in like, there's like a Q&A in the back that has like major rules in it. So just not, not great. But that said, this is a, it is almost the quintessential, I would say, pencil and paper one because it combines just enough additional variety and depth. So here's some, I think this is a, this is a supplement, the deep mind supplement with some more magical items. Like this leaf steel armor is great. Leaf steel armor is armor that's made out of plant material. So it's only good for two adventures and then it disintegrates. Very simple, but it's thematic. And I think that's the, the marriage between the simplicity and the theme here for Four Against Darkness probably those two things together really, really work. Twisted Dungeons is a supplement that I bought that um, I think it only, I don't know, it, I got it as a PDF. I don't know if you can get it as a physical. I tend to prefer these things in not PDF form. I don't remember why I have this as a PDF, but it adds a little complications to some of the dungeons. And I don't know if this is the, there's another one with the minions that adds, or maybe that's part of it. Just again, layers upon layers of material. You can mix and match the material as with many of these pencil and paper types of things. Here's the twisted minion. So this will allow you to uh, add some embellishments to the types of minions that you encounter and the minions that you encounter are many in your dungeons. So I'm not sure. I feel like this, this clearly has the biggest fan base. It is very popular and, and probably no one watching this video has not heard of it. And probably everybody's already played it. This, this gnome, by the way, is like some fan made gnome that I found and printed out before I got the uh, Wayfarers and Adventurers book where the kind of like official gnome character is and they're, they are different. So, uh, the, you know, I don't know what to say about Four Against Darkness other than what many people think, which is I really love it. It's a great, easy to pick up system. The material that comes out, the various books that add the some rules and some depth are enhance the game. I like playing the game at higher level characters because you get to do more and that's where it's more interesting. So when I am playing it, I will try to develop characters coming in at a higher level. And I think somewhere, I'm not going to spend the time in this video looking for it, but I feel like somewhere there's actually official rules for doing that or somehow I just do that. I can't really quite remember, frankly, but I feel like level three or four is like a sweet spot for this game in terms of starting out a character because it gives you access to just so much more that you can do. Sometimes it's a lot to manage four characters. And um, if that's the case, you know, don't, then that's not a game that I would play. But when doing this video, for example, and just looking through this material again, it definitely makes me want to pick it up and play it again and go back and make some new, make some new characters, usually coming out of this, this uh, 
supplement, no, not this one, this one here, because it's just hard for me not to be a gnome. And I really do like that troll, but uh, you got to go with some classics as well. So Four Against Darkness, it's, if you haven't, if you're interested in pencil and paper, dungeon crawling, you do owe it to yourself to get this, the basic, basic game. Although maybe look into it and figure out if and when a second edition is coming out, because I think a second edition for the basic rules would be quite welcome. And I don't see a date here on this. Been, this game's been out for a bit. I have also bought, to lesser excitement, I was really excited when I read Four Against the Old One, Great Old Ones was coming out um, by Marco Arnado. I don't really know how to pronounce his last name, but Marco Omnigamer on YouTube, who is uh, clearly a brilliant historian of games, theorist of games. He's written books about games that I've talked about on the channel, and he has his own YouTube channel. I was so excited for this because he was taking the source material of Four Against Darkness and putting it into the source material for the Lovecraft world. I have to say that this one actually fell flat for me. I played it a little bit and just stopped. It was oddly too linear. I don't know. It was This was a disappointment for me uh, for some reason. and. I can't, I never just really went back to it. So that was unfortunate. Four Against Mars, I loved, but it was just one book. And the designer has not seemed to come back to the sci-fi version of Four Against Darkness. I posted on BGG a while ago a question about, like, is this game dead? And I got, you know, people are very passionate about Four Against for against. Um, I got a ton of people saying like, how can you say it's dead? You know, the designers and said it's dead. But when I see all this content released for four against darkness and just this one thing for four against Mars, it seems like it's dead to me. I don't know. That's, that's what it is, but I really enjoyed this. It's like a campy sci-fi. I'm not even sure if you can get this book in print anymore, but I, I love this and, and would purchase a new material for this right away. If I saw it coming out. But Four Against Darkness is great. I love it. And that is, uh, that's a look inside it. Of all the game systems I'm talking about in this video, Micro Chapbook RPG is the one that I struggled with the most. And maybe the one I like the least. Maybe. The, I started playing it, I had this deluxe Game Master's Guide. It is available free. The basic rules are available free. You can find this on BGG and many other places. I also have a lot of other content I downloaded, like the Book of Water Magic and Pumpkin Magic. This was like a Halloween release. The designer does these sort of thematic releases, and I just got, this is an old Rainbow Unicorn Quest. This was from uh, Gay Pride Month 2021, and I got this to play with my daughter because you can play a, you can play a Rainbow Warrior, and there's like a Rainbow Fairy here and it contains its own adventure and story. What's great about the system is it's quite simple, and you are assigning, well, seven points or nine points. It depends to strength, dexterity, and wits, and you get values like two or three, possibly. And then in the main rules, you need to roll under that value in order to have a success. And that, when I first started playing the game using that mechanic, it just drove me crazy because if you're, you know, say you have a two in something, like, <laughs> it just felt like nothing was going on. Then I found these house rules here, rules of the house, where first of all, you could assign nine stat points and you rolled above. So you rolled above and added it and you needed to score a seven or higher to succeed. That at least provided less frustration, let's just put it that way. The So as I said, there's a lot of thematic things here. Here's a book of fire magic. You can sort of add it in as you go. What's frustrating about it is recently, so there's, there's this deluxe core rulebook updated edition that I sort of just bought, which is like confusingly not different so much than some of the other, than this deluxe core rulebook, which is I think different than some classic core rule book. I don't know. I bought Nimble's Book of Many Things also, 
which says potions, classes, races, and more, the level of detail is just not so high, I think is the, the message here, that none of the, for example, so here's a whole new basic classes, but really all they're getting is a name and then like one of the stats is, has proficiency, so you get to roll two dice and take either you know the better result. Um, but so in essence, there's no difference between an assassin who gets that bonus and this berserker. Like there's there, and and this is this is the difficulty with the system overall. So that when you get new weapons or something in a little mini expansion, it does like plus two damage and that's it. And there's no other differentiation. And the same thing is true with the the majority of the enemies that you encounter. So you have a tree golem here, and for example, it's got a it's there's just it's a missed opportunity. So there's a cool illustration, it's a little description, but then there's no impact. It's just it's just the damage, a dice damage. That's it. And this is stats. These stats probably exist the same for some other. Thing. There's there's no specific abilities or anything like that. I think in this rainbow unicorn one, maybe there's a little bit. So for example, the monsters here, they have a keyword untrained and you can look and see that's what untrained means. They have a torch. I mean, there's a little bit here, but I've just been, I've been just curious to me why that has not been developed. That a lot of content, new content comes out, but there's no level of added depth to it, unlike, for example, D100 Dungeon, which I talked about earlier in the video, where the new content does have added depth. So we get we get some flavor. So in this air magic, for example, you could have a breeze spell, and it says a heavy breeze sweeps over all the enemies in the room, dealing one damage to each. Cat's breath is a spell. Windfall. So it's that's like sort of thematic in that regard, but it doesn't, it just, it kind of falls a little short for me. And I keep buying the content because I like the concept of it, but it, um, it just, it's not quite enough depth, I guess, is the bottom line. There's one, this Gestures of Carrion Carnival. This is like a creepy kind of carnival situation where we have a jester and a knife thrower and a tumbling clown. But again, the monster type, the clown, it doesn't do anything different. It just has these stats. So it has the name that's different, but it just has the same stats. Sorry, you couldn't see me pointing to that off camera. But so that's, you can sense my frustration here a bit with this. And um, as I said, yet I keep buying content. I just recently bought this. And then these two things I got, the, I was looking for, you know, some new basic armors here. So you have the description and sort of what bonus it offers, but it just, it doesn't really, it just, it falls short, I think, in that way. So I, I guess I'm talking myself out of recommending this game, but you can, playing with the, the house rules of giving nine points for stats and having a diff essentially like a difficulty level of seven and needing to roll above that, at least you can sort of succeed in some things. What I have done, I don't think I have a notebook here to show you. I have taken some of the enemies here and tried to give them their own additional abilities by looking at, say, the monster manual for fifth edition or something like that. But I, I gave up a little bit because it was just, it was like, I felt like I was putting in too much effort. So I think of the I guess I am talking myself a little bit out of this. Of all the things that I'm talking about in this video, this is probably the one that I have glommed on to the least. Although, as I said, in this particular book, and maybe there are others, this does follow like an adventure. There's sort of a story where you're going through and you start in this clearing in a forest and you, you need to clear out the enemies that are there and then you move through through the story and it does look I haven't looked in detail because we haven't really gotten into it yet there's a little bit more description and again we come to this rather limited but at least something of some skills or things for the monsters but if I had a wish for this game it would be just 
to stop making new content, but just give more detail for the existing content. Because then I think you'd have a nice, very light system, but one where there would be maybe a little more decision making or a little more flavor theme developing so that when you are fighting a troll, for example, something happens that's slightly different than if you're fighting, say, an ogre or a ghoul. And that difference is not just in the damage done or the die needed or whatever to to kill that. And lastly here, at least for the pencil and paper dungeon crawls that I've played for this video, we've got Ancient Odysseys, Pocket Edition, Treasure Awaits, and more Treasure Awaits. I've done a video on this, like I've done videos on everything else I'm talking about here. This is called an introductory role-playing game, and it really is that a little bit. It is It is slightly different than the strict dungeon crawls that we've talked about because there are more um, ways of combining that it's called pursuits with abilities to have mechanics for doing different things other than just exploring and fighting. And I quite like the system. I haven't played it as much as I thought I would. And I think, again, part of it, it has to do with the fact that the rules are split up between these two books and of course you can just play the one book without the second book but that's just something that always bothers me but you have here I said uh, in D100 there wasn't another one that had things like the towns but this does too this has towns it has a little setting and it has short D6 tables for finding out things for example instead of just going to a store and buying something you roll to see if it's actually available or if it's available at a higher price or whatever and it has very simple traps and very brief descriptions but it's like it's enough and here with the monsters here we have examples of where at least there's something we have under the notes section something slightly different than it does so they're differentiated more and you do have in the basic game here very simple rules for creating the dungeon, casting spells. There is something, there's positioning here, so you can use, you don't need minis, but you can use tokens or whatever to position your characters because you have the ability to sneak, and I think there is perhaps a benefit to combat from behind. I can't really it's, remember, it's been a while since I've played this, but so the the it offers a little bit, there's a little bit more meat on this system than the others, but it's still pretty simple overall. And um, I do recall enjoying it quite a bit when I played it. Here's a section on constructing the dungeons and creating your random rooms or your special rooms. Again, D6 based, so not terribly complex, but enough to to provide really what it says, like an introduction to role-playing game, role-playing in the sense of understanding how you have a set of basic stats or whatever you would call them abilities that mesh with specific skills and mechanics that work together in that way that's familiar to people who play role-playing games so a little bit more in the role-playing genre than the others and I believe these books are still available in print. I got them quite some time ago. I think they were, they were print on demand. They're dated 2013. And I did a video on them quite some time ago. So if you're interested in them, I think these are less well known than everything else here. Partially, honestly, I think because the, just the title of them is not, I don't think is very good. Ancient Odysseys, it doesn't sound like a fantasy thing at all. It sounds like something from Greek mythology to me. Uh, treasure awaits and more treasure awaits. It's um, I think that I think there's an issue with the title here in terms of perhaps its lack of uh, visibility and maybe I don't know how much the publisher was um, was or is putting any effort behind it at this point. But they are pencil and paper dungeon crawls with a little bit extra that I've played and also have enjoyed. So that's a look at pretty much, I think, what I've got in my library of things. I mean, there may be something that I'm forgetting that I have that I've played 
but I do know there's two things that I have that I have not played that I want to show to you now and see if anybody has experience with them. You can put that in the comments and let me know what you think on them. I think this video for sure is the most three ring binder video I've done yet on the channel. This is the basic edition of Polyhedral Dungeon. It's an ultralight modern take on old school role playing. Here's the credits. I picked this up a little while ago. The date on it is, it says 2016. I picked it up a while ago, printed it out, and for some reason I just never played it. And the designer says there's purposeful holes and gaps in the game. That's by design. It, for example, doesn't include rules for designing dungeons themselves. You can fill this in. I, I, there's some reason why I just felt like it was incomplete. I'm not really sure. We have four attributes, bind, body, mind, soul, and social. You are using various polyhedral dice to have those attributes as well as pretty much everything in the game. There's various talents that you can have. Essentially, I think those are skills. The the difficulty chart has to do with the various dice, so you can assign that. I guess this is not meant to be a solo game. Maybe that was part of the reason I realized that I needed to spend a little bit more time to figure out how to play it not solo. Maybe it's um, maybe that's part of it I'm seeing now as I look through it. I, I truly can't remember what it was that caused me to think, well, wait, there's not a complete game here, so... I sort of turned away from it. Uh, we have a cleric with some spells here, and you can see the basically rolls a d6 for everything. And we can see here, for example, the dwarf, his body stat's going to be based off a d8, and mine d6, soul d4, and social d6. Elf is the straight d6s again. Um, halfling. So there's gear and loot here. Nice illustration. There's different qualities of gear, repairing the gear, and offering ex various benefits, again based on the polyhedral die system. And I guess it can be damaged as well. So when you're using it, you're damaging it. Various die damages. Again, I don't know how the game works, so this is just a flip through, but it says, for example, sample magic items here. I don't know whether there are more or not. Monsters, we have a, looks like we have a bunch of them with some special abilities here. Boss monsters, and then that's kind of it. And this is, that's Maze Rats. Uh, monster talents, Make your own content. Classes, monsters, loot, and gear. Oh, I think now I'm remembering there was... I went to the website, polyhedralgame.com, and I think there was um, uh, an indication of maybe, oh, there's going to be adventures and settings and other stuff, but maybe there wasn't any other stuff. I think that's that's what ended up happening now that I think about it. So I don't know. I may... I, if anyone has experience of this game or has played it in any way, let me know. I think I would just felt after printing it out, given that it wasn't even solo designed, the fact that uh, maybe it wasn't complete was just maybe too many hurdles to overcome to figure that out and then present it on the channel because it might not necessarily have interest to most of the viewers on the channel. But I, I own it and um, maybe I will maybe I will get to it someday. But if anyone's played it, please let us know in the comments what you thought. And then the very last thing I'm going to talk about for this video at any rate is something I've also had forever. This is uh, from 2014, Two Hour Dungeon Crawl. There are a bunch of two hour something games. They're sort of war gamey, as people say. I have the dungeon one. I don't know why I've never played it. I know I've taken it out before. It's a complete standalone game. And I think it is so low. It's, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why I haven't played it and I don't know, um, I don't know too much about it, but I have it. So again, 
this is maybe one that maybe one I will turn to to sort of see whether it doesn't look like it's that many pages. There's a lot of charts in the back, so that's cool. You know, people people always say like, oh, it's very war gamey, and I'm not really sure what that actually means. Maybe there's some a bunch of calculations in the combat. I don't know. <laughs> Stop saying I don't know. Anyway, to our dungeon crawl is the other pencil and paper system I have if you have played it up ah, playing solo question mark there are two ways to play it solo and same side well that's not very helpful <laughs> that's very unhelpful so I guess you can play it solo I don't see any indication of exactly how they expect you to do that or what you would need to do that so I uh, would need to figure that out obviously in any case if you have played this game if you want me to play this game let me know in the comments and I will I will get to it and go to the website and see if there's more content here. It does look like I've got, it only does seem to be 29 pages and I seem to have, I seem to have, well, 40 pages. I seem to have the 40 pages. So I seem to have everything here and um, I don't know. So there, I said it again. Anyway, a perhaps um, uh, fizzled out ending to the video, but I hope that this video, if you've had questions about any of the game systems that have been discussed in this video or that you've seen on the channel, I hope that this maybe answered some of those questions. The bottom line is I do like all of these systems, although as you could see, as assessing it in the context of everything, I would say that the micro chapbook is the one that offers the least and has the least kind of meat on it for all the new material that comes out. The the layer doesn't get deeper. They're just more, you know, they're just more of it. And I think for a one pager and contained rules, Pocket Dungeon is the way to go. For delving into a one adventure that you really come to know, really build up, really gain experience, sort of hard fought, hard won experience, D100 Dungeon is offers a lot and is going to offer even more with the World Builder supplement that is coming soon, which I will do a page through and discussion of on this channel. And Four Against Darkness, love that game. And I think it mixes in enough depth, especially with the higher level characters with a basically simple rule set to be very appealing. And I think that uh, Ancient Odyssey's Treasure Awaits is somewhat similar in that regard. I do believe, I didn't state this, I do believe in that game you need to play two or three characters. There is much less material there and seemingly much less designer support for it because I don't think there's new material coming out. But at least you can buy those two books and know that you have the entire system in your pocket.